Hi guys! So today I'm filming my most requested video, and as you could probably guess by the title, this is a sewing room tour. I'm excited to share this room with you guys because it makes me smile. I work best in an environment that makes me feel happy and inspired, and this room definitely does that. When I first acquired this room, because it used to be our guest room, I knew right away that I wanted it to be colorful and filled with trinkets and to have lots of stuff on display. Whether it's a costume I've made or a headpiece I've recently finished or piles of fabric or vintage books, I like having them out where I can see them and admire them and think about them. It just keeps me in a very positive, inspired headspace. But I also needed it to be a really practical space because I'm in here working for six hours a day. It's not a space that just sits here and looks pretty. So yeah, I really love this space and I hope you guys love it too. And I'll get into the video now because I have a feeling it's going to be a really long one. So this is what my sewing room looks like when you first walk in. The rug is from Ikea and I believe it's still available. The desk that goes across this wall was made by my dad. This desk and drawer unit, I'm not sure where it's from. I've had it for as long as I can remember. And if you go up, you will see a pair of cross swords. These are from a cosplay I did a very long time ago. They are one of the few keepsakes from cosplaying that I have because I love them and they match the room so nicely. I'll talk more about everything in that area later, but I'm going to start with what's right in front of me. And what's right in front of me is this IKEA mall unit, which you can't really see from this angle. So I'm going to go ahead and move, and then I'll show you what it looks like. So this is what that unit looks like. And if we go up from that unit, I have two sets of hooks, which are both from Lowe's. And on these, I store some of my completed projects. If I recall correctly, this is the IKEA mall unit. I picked it because it was the cheapest dresser they had that came in white. On the right side of it, I have a command hook, and on that command hook are a few works in progress that are past the point of fitting nicely in a drawer, but they're still not completed yet. On the left, I have two boxes from Home Goods. One of them stores all my recently completed patterns, which I keep in folders, and the one next to that has my mermaid project, which is currently on hiatus. And next to that, I have two books, and on top of those, I have a metal bin from Pottery Barn. This bucket is usually filled with works in progress or things that have recently come into my sewing room that I haven't found a place for. So right now, it's storing my most recent purchases from Joann's and a pair of shoes I just got for an 18th century project. The top drawer of this unit has a few of the IKEA drawer organizers in them. And this one has a bunch of thread in it, and it also has a box filled with beading kits. They're just in here because I don't reach for them often, and they happen to fit. Next to that, I have two more of the organizers, and this is where I store works in progress that don't have a drawer or bin devoted to them. So I have a pair of leggings, some bias tape, a pattern for the leggings, and a crown in here. But what's in here differs depending on what day of the week it is. It's totally up to what I have in progress and what fits in here. And then at the back, I have mock-up fabric and fabric that I use for draping patterns. The drawer below that has fabric in it. This isn't devoted to any particular type of fabric. I have organza in here, I have chiffon, I have taffeta. Pretty much anything goes in here. The only rule is that it has to be folded nicely. This drawer is kind of random. I have more of those IKEA organizers at the back. One of them has materials I would use for headpieces in them, like butterflies and skewers. I also have one of these devoted to vintage gloves. This final one holds a bunch of ribbon, and then I even have some seashell packets in here. This is very much a random, doesn't belong anywhere else type of drawer. And then I have some small bolts of fabric just because they fit really nicely in here. The final drawer has some completed projects in it. Again, this isn't really organized by type of project, it's just whatever happens to fit in here. I have a hip roll I made a few chemises, a pair of shorts from my Pretty Pirate project, which I made a couple years ago, and the bodice and skirt from my Cinderella dress. This is my sewing machine. It's an industrial machine, and it's a Singer 191D20. I got it off of eBay for a pretty good deal, and I'm so happy that I did because it's a really awesome machine, and it served me very well. The downside to having an industrial sewing machine is that it's really, really loud. <laughs> Above my sewing machine, I have a mirror that you can see me in, so hi. The mirror was put in when I first acquired this room, and I had a sewing machine that sat on my table. And then I got an industrial machine, which comes with its own table, and the only place I could possibly put it was in front of the mirror. And we just didn't bother to take the mirror down first. Underneath my machine, I have a lovely Sterilite bucket, which is one of the two trash cans in here. 
And then I have these four green and clear plastic bins, which are from Target. The top one has my Merida costume in it. The one below that has wigs. The one below that has my Halloween costume. And the one below that is kind of the random box of crap and miscellaneous things. To the left of that, I have another one of those Pottery Barn bins. And it's filled with rolls of newsprint, which is what I'm currently using for pattern paper because I got a thousand sheets of it really cheap on Amazon. But as it turns out, a thousand sheets is a lot and it's been two years and I still have half of it left. On the left side of that, I have bolt cutters and I have the thing that I usually store my tripod in. To the left of my sewing machine, I have another costume hanging up and this is the Christmas costume that I made in 2013. I think now it's time to talk about this wall of the room. The desk was made by my dad and he also made the ironing board. It's an Ikea desk surface that I covered with fabric and quilt batting and then he made the little stand for it. On the back side of the ironing table I store rulers and yardsticks and on the front side I have three little boxes that I got from Michaels. The middle one is empty and the one on the left has sewing machine supplies like extra needles and bobbins and lights and stuff in it and it also has soft measuring tapes. The one on the right side has scissors and grommet pliers and screwdrivers in it and stuff like that. These two things are corner bookcases and we didn't have a spot for these when we moved so I stole them and put them on top of my desk and filled them with wake heads. I know they're kind of creepy but it's such a space saver because that's just wasted space and I'd have to find a place for all my bonnets and headpieces if I didn't have those there. I think that covers most of it, so now let's get a closer look. This is the bottom shelf of one of the corner bookcases, and I have three little jars here. And then in front, I have the little dachshund pincushion I got from Joann's, and a postcard that my grandma sent me. And next to that, I have a pile of vintage books from my great aunt, and they're all about costumes and sewing, and they're really fantastic books, and I'm so grateful to have them in my collection. I'm still working on reading my way through them, and I've been enjoying it so far. And then I have a few candles that I kept around because I think they look fancy. This is my bulletin board. It's mostly filled with sketches I've done and things I've pulled out of Vogue, but I also have a lot of headpieces on there. And I have a quote from RuPaul's Drag Race that says, Words can't hurt you, only your perception of words can hurt you, by Jinx Monsoon, which I think is a really positive, good message to consider, especially when you post a lot of stuff online. Next to that, I have a hat I've made, I have a sketchbook, I have a ham and a sleeve roll, and then I have two spritz bottles. One has water in it and the other has best press. Above that, I have what is probably my favorite part of this room. I absolutely love this little shelving unit. It's from Michael's. And I really love what's on it, too. I have a bunch of spice jars from Ikea that are filled with pearls and beads. And I also have a little tomato, which is where I store needles that I'm using. Above that, I have four jars. They're also from Ikea. Three of them are filled with rayon threads. And then the one on the far right is filled with vintage sequins, which a reader of my blog sent me. And they're pretty much the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. So thanks again for that if you're watching. And then, of course, I have my unicorns, and these are Tokidoki unicorns, and I'm kind of obsessed with them. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you all their names, even though you probably don't care. <laughs> I have Yuma, Ruby, Stellina, Hickory, Cornetto, Dolce, Timber, Pepperino, Metallico, Cosmo, Creamio, Margarita, Pixie, Sirena, Can Can, Yuki, and Muka. And I love them all. <laughs> Next, my unicorn collection, I have two embossed floral boxes, which are from Home Goods. The bottom one stores my beading collection, and the top one has fake flowers in it. The second shelf on one of the corner bookcases has a bunch of books on it. These are also from my great aunt, and they're a fantastic collection. They're actually textbooks from the Women's Institute of Domestic Arts. Next to that, I have two geometric print boxes, and these are from BJ's. The top one has my rhinestone bejeweler pro tool in it, and the one below that has large bags of seed beads in it, and all my Monty's. Now if we go underneath the desk, I have five of these teal lid boxes, which are from Target, and they're all filled with fabric and petticoats. And then resting on top of them, I have bolts of fabric. I much prefer to have fabric in bolts than to have it folded, Unfortunately, my space doesn't allow me to have everything bolted, but I have all the larger lengths of fabric stored here. To the left of that, I have a serger and I have a little heater, which I use to keep this room warm in the winter. This box stores a petticoat, 
And there are two damask print boxes back there. There's another blue lidded bin, and there's also my sewing machine box, and all of those things are packed full with petticoats. I don't actually have that many petticoats since I reused them between costumes, but they do take up a fair amount of space, so that corner is completely devoted to them. This box is stored with my Monarch collection, and then this box is just random fabrics that I don't reach for particularly often. The one on the far right has minky and quilt batting in it, along with some netting. Under here, I have a drawer unit, which as I said earlier, I don't know where it's from. And then this unit is from Ikea. On the top layer of this, I store chemises. Below that, I store corsets. And then I have two more geometric print boxes, which have headpieces in them. But you can't see those right now because it's covered by another one of my trash cans. If I move that, then that's what that looks like. The bench is also from Ikea. And now I'll show you inside of this unit. The top drawer is not the tidiest. I have more of the Ikea spice jars that store binder clips and paper clips and safety pins. I have tape in here. I have a box of extra mechanical pencils. And I also have my notebook, which is where I do video planning and blog post planning. Below that, I have cases of Copic markers. This was my love before I discovered sewing. And every single birthday or Christmas, I bought as many of these as I could afford. And they have been treasured dearly. But unfortunately, I don't get much use out of them anymore. And another drawer that is kind of boring. On this side, I have more sketchbooks and Bristol board and notebooks. And then this is just sort of electronic stuff. So I have the new microphone that I bought. So hopefully my sound quality will be a little bit better. I have a box for camera extras. So things like memory cards and screen covers. I have the charger, the charger for my laptop, headphones, an extra lens, all sorts of stuff like that. This is probably the most boring part of the room, but it's also where I spend the most time. This is where I do all my filming and hand sewing and probably where I sit for about four hours or five hours every day. I have my laptop on it right now, and then behind it, you can see two owls, which I use to store colored pencils and various pens. Both of those little ceramic owls are from Michaels. And next to that, I have three ceramic birds, which are also from Michaels, and I have my little toothless statue. Next to that desk, I have another IKEA mall unit, except this one only has three drawers. And on the top, I have two hat boxes, and both of those store more cotton mock-up fabric. And then on top, I have the headpiece that I made for my Flower Fairy project. And next to that, I have the pinecone headpiece that I made. I have a little sewing machine figure, which my grandma got me, and I have a few different books. I have two of the Art of Sewing books, and I also have the Complete Costume History, which is probably my favorite book of all time, even though it's really historically inaccurate. It's just so much fun to look through, and if you ever see it, Give it a flick through because it's amazing. Inside the top drawer, I have a bunch of fabric. There is some wool knit on the right side. There are bolts of chiffon on the left side. And then in the middle, I have a bunch of cotton sateen and some printed chiffon. This has got to be my favorite drawer because I absolutely love what's inside of it. It's filled to the brim with lace, which is one of my favorite fabrics. This drawer is like my happy place to just look through and think about all the possibilities for the materials inside of it. This is definitely the most boring drawer of the bunch, but it's the one that I reach for the most often. I have two more of those IKEA organizers in here. This one is filled with fabrics I'd use for the base of corsets, or fabrics I've purchased specifically for lining garments. Then over here I have boning, I have wire, I have a little bin filled with horsehair braid, I have safety goggles for when I'm cutting boning, and then beneath that I have fusible interfacing. On the right side I have cording for making piping and lace for finishing seams. If we go next to that and up a little bit, I have another set of hooks. These ones are a little bit fancier and they were purchased from Ikea. Then hanging on that I have my fall flower fairy dress, my Heinrich dress, a medieval dress I recently finished, and my farthingale. If we go down a little bit, I have my Uniquely You dress form, and I also have a bunch more of those geometric print boxes that were from BJ's. The top one is filled with Copic marker refills, the one below that is empty, the one below that is empty, and then this one has candles and headbands in it, which I purchased for headpieces. Down here I have a box for fur. I didn't purchase any of these furs, they were a gift from my grandmother and my great-grandmother. And then the box below that is just more of the same. This box is by far my favorite, and I think you'll see why when I open it. It's filled with vintage lace that belonged to one of my mom's friends and her mother. And as you can see, everything in here is absolutely gorgeous, and it's just a dream to look through it.
The one below this has my forest fairy costume in it, and then the one below that has my Regency dress in it. So now it's time to move on to this part of the room. As you can see, we just went over what's on the right side of this, and the left side is where we originally entered the room. And all that's really in this area is my closet, which I will show you through. And in front of that, I have a dress I'm working on and my dress form that I use most often, which I got from buystoreshelving.com. I was going to put this away because it makes the space look more cluttered than it actually is, even though it is kind of already quite cluttered, but more often than not I have a dress in progress, so this is sort of an accurate depiction of what my studio usually looks like. Now let me show you what's behind the doors. So in this half of the closet I have a little bar where I store a whole bunch of different costumes. Even though it is a relatively small bar, you'd be surprised how much I fit on there. I have my Christmas angel costume, I have my orchid dress, which are both ball gowns, and I also have my Isabella de Requesens dress, a few draped gowns I've made, my Tudor project, a Civil War era project, a few kirtles, and yeah, just all sorts of stuff, and it all gets packed in there, and that's where most of my costumes live. And if we go up from that, I have three more hat boxes. In the top one, I have all the accessories for my Tudor project. In the one below that, I have some unsorted scraps from various projects. And the one below that has my original flower dress that I made. To the right of that, I have a bunch of plastic boxes, which are from Michael's. And sitting on top of them, I have some cinnamon scented pine cones, which keep this closet smelling really nice. And below that, I have some unsorted trims. Beneath that, I have scraps of brocade, a box for taffeta, a box for brocade in a specific blue tone, because I have a lot of it for some reason, and below that's my Elsa skirt and bodice. And this is the top of the other half of the closet. On the left side, I have my MacBook box. I also have my portfolio, a few notebooks, just random stuff like that. And then I have four bins, which are from Michael's. The bottom one stores velvet, the one next to that stores wigs, the one on top of that stores quilt batting, and the one next to that has pieces of suiting in it. So below that I have another shelf, and on this one I have some folded fabric. Most of the materials I have folded are wool or wool blends, because they tend to take up the most space in drawers, and they also fold really nicely. Next to that I have some more books, and next to those I have six photo boxes, which I got from AC Moore. And in these I store trims lace, lace appliques, lace bolts, and some spools of ribbon. Down here I have more folded fabric. I also have two stair light units. On top of the larger unit I have a box filled with embroidery floss and I have two spice jars. And on top of the smaller unit I have some pins. The top drawer has upholstery thread in it. It also has seam rippers and extra needles. The one below that has all sorts of grommets in it as well as the tools to press grommets. The one below that has elastic in it. The next one has Velcro in it, buckles, and fray check. And the final one has snaps and hooks and eyes. I keep bumping the drawers into these, and these are the 120 inch wide fabrics that I store on rolls. In the three drawer unit, the top drawer is filled with buttons. And most of these were buttons purchased on Etsy. You can get buttons much cheaper on Etsy. It tends to be less than $5 to get 20 buttons. So that's where a lot of these have come from. A lot of these are also buttons that I've used in projects, then disposed of the project and kept the buttons. And then over here I have a lot of the ones that you get from Joann's or in smaller batches. Back here I have buttons that you cover yourself. And I think that's about it. The one below that has boning in it. I have some plastic cloth covered boning, some spiral steel boning, some hooping wire, busk, and tin snips which I usually use to cut steel boning. And there's a nail file in there for when I'm working with plastic bones. The final drawer is kind of a mess. It mostly stores zippers, as you can probably tell. I also have a few things of ribbon and some various cords which I use for lacing garments and making piping. And then in front here I have some pre-made bias tape. Below that, I have three more of those Pottery Barn metal buckets, and in the one on the left, I just have random fabrics that don't fit in a drawer, and in the middle one, I have linen or fabrics I bought specifically for making chemises, and the one next to that is empty, but I'm sure I will find something to put in it someday soon. 
And below those, I have three bolts of satin-faced chiffon. Down here, I have a bunch of the bins that you can get for about a dollar at Target or Walmart, and they just store specific types of fabric. So I have one with fur, one with poplin, one with shanting, another one with shanting, one with quilter's cotton. You get the idea. I also have a wire CD holder, which is filled with various small threads. I mostly use threads that are on large cones, but I do have some small ones, and that's where they go. I think that's it for this room, but I have taken over a unit outside my door and part of our linen closet, so I'll show you inside of those really quick as well. So this is the unit right outside my sewing room, and on top of the unit I have a wicker basket filled with dog stuff, so Gwen's bed and blanket for when she comes to visit me. And speaking of dogs, if you can hear any whining, it's because they're downstairs alone and they're not very happy about it. Then next to the basket, I have another box from Pottery Barn, and it's filled with pieces that haven't quite made their way and found a place in my sewing room just yet. And next to that, I have a candle platter thing that I made for a photo shoot that never ended up happening. If we go down a little bit, you'll see four drawers and a cupboard. And the four drawers are my project drawers, so they store anything that's in progress, and each drawer is assigned to a different project, though a few projects are sharing a drawer right now. I also have this cupboard, which is what I'll show you inside of now. In the top part of the cupboard, I have thread and two plastic drawers. Then I have a little toolbox, I have my steamer, and behind my steamer, I have some colored pencils. If we go down a little bit, I have this rotating unit, and it's filled with all the markers that aren't Copic markers that I used to use when I was really into drawing. And next to that, I have a really grubby looking lint roller. I have the Pattern Making for Fashion Design book, and the My Princess Crafts book, which is the book that I'm actually in, which is kind of cool. The first drawer down holds a bunch of different types of fabrics, but it's mostly brocades and fancy fabrics. And you can see I just have a whole bunch of costumes stored in here. What's inside these drawers is ever-changing, since they never stay the same for more than a week or two. They basically store whatever I'm working on at that moment. So this top one has materials for my burgundian dress, these are the rhinestones and beads I've been using, and then I have some bias tape I've made for the project and some of the trim I'm using on it. This one is the one storing two projects right now, and in here I have a 1630s taffeta dress, and I have a 16th century kirtle, and all the fabrics and patterns that go with them. This is stuff for the kirtle and headpiece that go with my burgundian dress, but since I finished both of those projects, I'm going to clean out this drawer and put something new in it. This drawer also stores stuff for two projects. At the back I have things for an ivory 18th century dress, and at the front I have the raw materials for an embroidery project that I started on recently. Okay, so this is the linen closet, and at the top I have my bin of death, which is basically where projects go to die, um, or rather it's where they go when I've given up on them but don't want to get rid of them just yet. And then on top of that I have a few binders which store patterns that I made in 2013. I don't want to get rid of them because I might use them someday, but they're definitely not something I'm reaching for now. Below that I have more of these blue lidded bins. In the top left one I have inks and glue and caulking and all sorts of supplies that you need when you're doing crafting stuff but aren't necessarily fun to talk about or to look at. And next to that I have some acrylic paints. And below that, I actually have the bottles of paints that you can get for about 50 cents at Michael's. And to the left of that, I have more camera supplies for my old camera and pieces for this camera that don't actually work. And on the right side of that, I have some more books. These aren't books that I use or reach for very often, but they're good resources to have. Below that, I have another one of those bins, which has wig pieces in it. So extra wefts for wigs or wigs I've taken apart and stuff like that. On top of that I have some plastic containers which store watercolors. I think these were my 13th birthday gift. I remember going to Pearl's Art Supplies and just having so much fun picking them out. And next to that I have folders that store all my artwork from the last five years. On top of that I have some extra sketchbooks. I also have some dried flowers which are being stored in a basket. I'm not sure what these are going to get used for, but I'm sure they'll end up on a headpiece or dress at some point in the near future. 
Below that I have two plastic bins. The bottom one has a bunch of fake flowers in it, and then the top one has my glue guns in it, extra glue sticks, and a headpiece that I have in progress. On the right side of that I have more watercolors, Crayola pencils, uh, convention badges, some store-bought patterns, the oil and cover for my sewing machine, and weirdly a wedding dress project that I abandoned. So that's it! Thank you for making it to the end because I know this was probably a really long one. I will have links in the description box to things that I mentioned and to where everything's from, and if you have any questions feel free to ask them in the comments. I won't take up any more of your time, thanks again for watching, and I hope you have a really fantastic day.